Fab, excellent. Welcome everyone and uh, welcome to the next installment of uh, the TA Job Market Review with me, Robert Nunn. And today I'm being joined by Jeff Green, who happens to be, he was my first manager in the TA world. So it's all your fault, Jeff, to where I yeah. am now. Guilty as charged. Yeah. Cheers, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Thanks for joining me on this call. Um, do you want to just give a brief introduction to, into who you are and your TA career? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cheers, Rob. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've been in talent acquisition for 20 plus years. I think we'll keep it as a plus, uh, but started <laughs> off classic, you know, agency world. Um, it was a terrible sort of agency recruiter. So um, a little bit too ethical, I think, at times. Um, moved into the RPO world where we uh, first connected. So that was yep. with Alexander Mann Solutions um, on a Capgemini account. And I, I do remember, and we might come back to it, the, uh, the, the, the day of the interview as well. Um, but yeah, had a few <laughs> successful years with uh, Alexander Mann Solutions, um, yeah, about seven years with them, and then moved uh, to the other side of the fence, actually managing an RPO uh, with, uh, sorry, with uh, Microsoft. Um, yeah. So a couple of years there on a contract, which was brilliant experience, you know, European teams, uh, managing a uh, some exec hiring for the first time as well, which was superb. Yeah. And then the last 10 years I've spent with um, OpenText, which is um, a specialist in the information management uh, side. And huge growth really through the organization, quite acquisitive as well as uh, organic growth, but growing from about three and a half thousand employees uh, when I started, about 1.3 billion up to 25,000 and about sort of um, yeah. like 4.4 billion when I left. And uh, yeah, pr pretty much every role from recruiter when I first joined into European manager, into you know, leading the uh, team in India. A uh, yeah. bit of a spell doing an interim global lead as well. So I pretty much had sort of covered off a lot of the roles there yeah. within the uh, within the team. So, and then um, yeah, I left um, in uh, June of this year, end of June this year. Um, yeah, yeah my, uh, OpenText had taken over a company called Microfocus, a you know, UK-based company based out in Newbury. Um, yeah. But big acquisition, it leapt from about 14,500 people up to 25,000. And with the restructuring, it just felt after 10 years and, you know, approaching a big birthday this year, you know, it felt like a good time for me to get out and explore the market. So, um, you know, I've done a bit of that really over the summer. Yeah. And, um, you yeah, know, that's why we're sort of here today. Yeah. Well, how, I mean, how would you describe the current job market? for TA professionals crazy. yeah, <laughs> yeah it's absolutely crazy I mean look we've been through so much in the last four or five years you know we've been through the sort of the peaks and troughs probably more than many other industries um and it has been really quiet I think you know coming onto the job market yeah you know, at the start of the summer has probably yeah. you know it's, it's probably the worst time to actually come on board um I know some people that you're looking at some of my peers you know they were very quick to getting messages out there, you can see the activity, you know, from them immediately, you know, and yeah. um, I probably took a slightly different approach. I sort of, um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, from my perspective, it was also trying to enjoy some downtime, you know, get some time with family, care for, yeah. for parents, you know, and other fun stuff like that, you know, but, um, you know, coming back now um, after August, you know, there's, I've had so much sun that my freckles have sort of leapt out and it's about time to get serious <laughs> and get, get out there. Um, but it, it, it's been slow. I mean, you know, yeah, I think it, it's fair to say there's less opportunities than there were. Um, and it, it, I think what the interesting thing is, you know, the, the, the applications, you know, against any advert are just unbelievable levels. You know, you're talking four figures in many cases, and yeah. that's quite daunting and scary in some respects. But, it, you know, in, in, in many other ways, it also it, it's great to see it from the other side of the fence, to see that candidate experience and to think about, you know, the, the way that, a recruiter would sort of um, narrow down the level of applicants so they can get to the people they want to speak to. Um, so it's it's tailoring those job applications yes. for each particular one. And obviously the other way in the best way remains networking and speaking to people within your network to get the leads. And, uh, you know, but yeah, it's been really quiet, um, you know, interesting experience because, you know, it's been 10 years since I've been out in the job market yeah, yeah, and I've course. always been very lucky in the past, I think, with my, the way I've managed to secure opportunities. Um, but I think, uh, you know, I think it'll it'll make me a better recruiter or a better recruitment leader when I do get back in there. So, um, yeah. Absolutely. Well, and what importance do you put on networking and your personal brand with your job search? Yeah, a huge amount, really, to be honest. I think the networks are, are, are absolutely vital. And not being in work actually gives you that opportunity where it doesn't give you any more excuses not to get in touch with people or reconnect with people because we're all guilty we've all got x thousands of contacts on linkedin but how many are we actively sort of speaking to checking in with 
Um, and I think one thing that's really taught me over the last um, you know, a couple of months has just been the reciprocal nature and the camaraderie and the community that you're yeah. now seeing within people, whether it's sharing jobs, whether it's you know liking and, and making comments on people when they are seeking work, because you know our industry has suffered probably more than most, as I was saying. And um, I think everybody can help each other just by you know amplifying sure. the message and, and, and increasing the activity. Um, so that yeah, that that's important. But the network is critical, you know, and it's not just the old network; it's actually making new connections as well. You know, it's thinking through, it, it, it's it's trying to, you know, we, you know, everybody's LinkedIn has become a, you know, a spam folder in many ways, you know. So it's it's trying to sort of not just rely on that, try and reach out directly, send the odd text message, make the odd phone call. You know, that's a bizarre right. way of operating, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but 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 reach out to people and think about, you know, what, what can you give them? Is it value? Is it, you know, clearly they may not have opportunities at the moment, but it's still trying to share some expertise. So any conversation, they're getting something out of it as well as yourself. Um, yeah. I think that's another important step that you've got to try and do. Um, but, yeah, it's great. It's great to have that time to be able to do that. Um, so you know, so that, that's that's an important step. So, I mean, I don't know if you've, you've done anything in particular, but is there anything that recruiters, people in TA can do in periods of downturn to, to, to upskill or to sort of keep skills fresh? Yeah, I think it's really important. Yeah, your self-development um, is, is critical. Um, I think the first thing is it's looking after your well-being, um, yeah. you know, because not being in work is, is a challenge. There are you know, more concerns. You're managing your family's concerns as well, your partner's concerns, because there is a financial uncertainty um so well-being is critical making sure that you are you know getting up at the appropriate times in the morning and uh, you know you're exercising you're taking that time yeah. out for you because why not you're not always going to get it um you know, you'll yeah. soon be back to the sort of 15 16 whatever hour days you know once you're back in a role <laughs> particularly a global role so you know it, you've got to embrace that first and foremost um the second thing is yeah trying to improve yourself thinking about any gaps or any development areas so i've done a couple of courses you know online courses um okay. leadership courses i've um, you know spent a bit of time with a couple of life coaches to sort of just chat through where you know i am or where i want to go in the future um yeah. and then yeah i mean clearly the impact of you know it's a overused term but ai and you know in recruitment and where it's going to go there's a lot of people trying to claim to be experts on it there's you know a lot of people claiming that they've got the best tool um, but trying to sort of understand that and think ahead about, you know, how that, how are those sort of changes in that landscape really going to affect our business and not just TA, but also the, the actual, you know, the HR uh, aspects as well. I think that's another sort of critical area that I've been trying to keep on top of. Um, right. Yeah. And then, yeah, just t turning up to conferences and um, you know, le learning from different thought leaders um, again, you know, just trying to investigate and yeah, having that time to be able to sort of listen in and contribute to um, you know, some online forums and communities as well. Wonderful. So you mentioned that that this experience is going to make you a better recruiter. Can you can you share sort of some a highlight or something positive that has happened as part of your process? Ultimately, you've been um, rejected or unsuccessful, but is there a mm. particular recruiter or process that has stood out that you want to share? Yeah, there was one. Um, I don't know. Do you want me to name companies? I'm very happy to do so. I don't have a problem. No. Yeah. If you feel comfortable to. Then yeah. No. There was a recruiter, for... Bradley Hall, at uh, Version One. Um, yeah. I applied to them. You know, it was a role based around the Midlands area, which obviously was a, a tip to me. Although I'm pretty yeah. sort of flexible where where I work. <laughs> um, and they'd had over a thousand applicants. I think it was probably about twelve hundred. Um, you know, initially I hadn't heard anything. Um, then I managed to sort of identify a connection to the uh, recruiter and we, we ended up speaking um went through that first round of interviews met with somebody in the business and um yeah ultimately they decided that they didn't want to go forward with me i also did a load of online tests you know aptitude tests and other verbal reasoning tests which is a real <laughs> sort of uh, eye opener you know my, one of my children's going through is 11 plus at the moment and uh, that that was um that was entertaining because uh, you know i yeah. felt for him in terms of learning new skills or relearning some of those skills mm -hmm. um but what i really loved about it was i mean i love the company i like the profile i like the um you know the cultural aspect but uh, Bradley Hall, the recruiter, contacted me and we went through probably about 30, 35 minutes in terms of feedback, just right. in terms okay. of his guidance and advice in terms of where to go. And that that was just so, so reassuring. It was probably one of the first rejections I'd had. Obviously, you know, you get a lot of automated ones, but that personal touch just reinforced um, 
you know, what a positive candidate experience we all should strive to do. And, you know, not everybody's going to be able to find that time uh, to do that. But that really stood out for me. Um, I was really impressed. And, um, you know, I've, I've put a few names across to him. Uh, you know, and it, hopefully that'll be a relationship that goes forward, you know. But that that really stood out for me. I really, really like that, you know, fresh relationship. And just um, I felt valued as a human being. And you know, not every organisation is going to want to go forward with me and vice versa. You know, I'm not going to yeah. select every organisation. But to still come out with value out of a out of a process and experience, I think is superb. So um, yeah. So Bradley, Wonderful. thank you. Yeah. Um, and and given the roller coaster that we've been through over the last eighteen months, where recruiters were in demand, I don't know if you were trying yeah. to hire recruiters eighteen yeah. twenty four months ago, um, to where to where we are now. What, what's next for the TA industry? What's twenty twenty four going to look like? Do you think? I think it'll be another tough year. Um, I do think that. Um, on the enterprise side, I think there probably are still a few more rounds of uh, yeah. you know, redundancies and rifts to go through. I mean, some absolutely will bounce back and start hiring. Um, you know, I've been involved in the tech industry, which I think has been sort of impacted a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. So I think um, that will be quite slow. I think we are beginning to see a little bit more movement in some of the smaller um uh yeah mid-size and certainly some of the vc um you know private equity backed organizations but i don't think we're going to see it back to you know the boom periods a couple of years ago um but there are some industries which will continue to sort of hire and i think as a ta professional we probably haven't seen as much sort of you know know, people jumping between different industries i think that may be something that we will see a bit more of um and then obviously the roles will shift again you know in terms of uh, I was just before this one, I was on the Matt Adler uh, podcast, I couldn't listen to the whole thing, but just they were talking about that very question. Yeah. Um, and it was quite interesting to sort of hear some of their inputs about you know, the, the, the shift in role and the the, you know, the shift in focus of a TA professional as well. So, um, yeah. yeah, things will change. Um, but, yeah, um, I think it, it is about skills, though, isn't it? You know, it's about different skills we have. Yeah. Um So, yeah, I mean, what, what's your take on it from you know, your side? You're having a number of conversations at the moment, so. Yeah, well, I think um, uh, there's some wisdom in what you're saying there. That you know, I think skills first is is going to be mm, key, and I think um, we're all too quick within TA to find those round pegs and round holes, mm. whereas people jumping between industries are just as valuable because they do Absolutely. have the skills and they've done the the projects and they've done the hard recruiting and the 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 purple squirrel recruitment, and they can they mm. can apply those skills. In any industry, and I think, I, 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 I think that's where that's where the human being really comes in, and the old school recruiting techniques are going to be vital to to, to yeah. find that sort of talent. And you know, again, thinking about diversity and the DNI and finding those sorts of um, skills, you can't magic up candidates that just don't exist. And you know, so you, yeah. you you have to be creative. You have to look at people coming from different sort of paths. Um, so I think that's where the individual and the human being is is going to be still playing a very critical role. Hundred percent. And final question, as is as is tradition, was asked by the previous person I interviewed. How can TA professionals become more commercial? Yeah, I think this is something that really is important to me because I, I always like my recruiters to um, have that business acumen. I think it's an intrigue, you know, that, that's so important. You have to want to get under the skin of your business. And that means yeah. spending time with the experts, which is your hiring managers and your leaders. Um, yeah, I was really fortunate at OpenText that I was able to sit with the, um, the customer solutions group, which is their consulting sort of um, division, which is 3,000 strong. It's now, I think, 7,000. It's, it's, it's multiplied quite a lot with Microfocus. But I sat in on their leadership team, and that was, that was invaluable to me just yeah. to sort of improve my experience. And likewise, when I've hired recruiters in the past, um, you know, yourself included, I want people who, who've got that commercial sort of background um and you know or, or that co- commercial potential so a couple of the people i hired into you know the open text team um actually went across into sales and were very very successful sales um yeah. you know account executives and um you know both went to club and uh, had very successful careers in in sales one i was able to pull back into ta which was a great win um <laughs> so yeah that, that that was really really important so um you know i think it, it is just talking to your business leaders every intake is a great opportunity to learn about the business yeah, every interview is as well you know you you, you yeah. learn about the business you learn about the market by talking to candidates um ask the questions you know um and uh, just be prepared to listen and learn that's one of the most important things brilliant well thank you jeff 
Thank you for your insights. No, it's and, great uh, to catch up, Rob. Yeah, it's been indeed. a long time. Was it 2006? So uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be. Uh, hopefully it won't be that. I know we met up at a couple of conferences, but uh, <laughs> you know it, it, it's good to sort of see your face again and uh, spend some time with you. So yeah. thanks very much. Best of luck with your onward search. Speak yeah, to you soon. Appreciate that. Cheers. Bye.